Welcome back, students. So, I'm really excited to notice in the learning calendar that we're back to some traditional nursery rhymes this week. Maybe you haven't seen them yet because I think the first one is tomorrow, but it's reminding me of some of the traditional tales that I've been reading to you and also some of the new modern, newfangled, new setting different versions, right? So if you'll remember, I pointed this out to you before, we read Mañana Iguana uh, for Dia del Idioma for Spanish Language Day and we made a connection to this book, The Little Red Hen Goes to School, which is another kind of version of the traditional tale, The Little Red Hen. Didn't I tell you? It's amazing. In my house, I have so many different books. And sure enough, I actually have the traditional version of The Little Red Hen, illustrated by Paul Galdon. I think I've explained to you how much I love Paul Galdon's kind of very detailed and old-fashioned illustrations. So even though this is a great traditional tale with really cute illustrations, remember how it's so cute how the cat and the dog and the mouse say, not I, and their little faces are inside the O. But I'm not gonna read this one to you because I think you're pretty familiar with this one. Instead, I'm gonna make a Paul Galdon connection because I found another traditional tale by him at my house, The Three Little Pigs. And I hadn't read this to you this year, and it's a real fun one, so that's what we're going to read this afternoon. The Three Little Pigs by Paul Galdon. And on the front, I see them. It's so lovely how the little picture frame is made from birch branches. That's a special kind of tree with kind of silvery white bark, and their pigs are holding turnips and some greens and some apples. And on the back, interestingly, is the big bad wolf. But what's kind of funny is Paul Galdon has encircled, encircled the big bad wolf with like a, a decoration or a wreath, a border of flowers. That's a kind of funny contrast to have the big bad wolf in a circle of flowers. Anyway, let's enjoy this. The Three Little Pigs by Paul Galdon. Scholastic. And on this page, the dedication page, I see a cute little ladybug. Okay, and oh, some of those nice big O's. And it starts off, once upon a time. Wow, a lot of traditional tales start off with that phrase, right? Once upon a time, there was an old sow with three little pigs. She had no money to keep them, so she sent them off to seek their fortune. Okay, so remember an old sow is like a mother pig. We learned that when we read our gingerbread books, right? And um, seeking your fortune is to kind of figure out what you're going to do in life. How are you going to take care of yourself? So she's crying a little as she waves goodbye to them. And off they go with their little, all their possessions tied up in a little cloth on the, hanging from the end of a stick. And right away, I think this, the setting of this must be in the country, right? The first little pig met a man with a bundle of straw and said to him, Please, man, give me that straw to build me a house. So the man did, and the little pig built his house with it. So there he is meeting the man, and it's kind of neat that the border is made out of straw. The border of the illustration is also straw. Along came a wolf. He knocked at the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, said the little pig. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. Ooh, he looks mean. So the wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew the house in and he ate up the first little pig. Ooh. There the little pig is getting blown away. The second little pig met a man with a bundle of sticks and said, Please man, give me those sticks to build me a house. So the man did and the little pig built his house with them. And just like in the other illustration, 
The border of the picture of the house is made out of sticks. Then along came the wolf and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. Ooh, wow, that wolf looking in the window looks so scary with his tongue hanging out like he's hungry. And look at the poor little pig inside, looks afraid. So he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed and at last he blew the house in and he ate up the second little pig. Wow, that time he had to huff and puff twice as much, right? For the straw, straw is lighter, right? Straw is just like dried out long grass. So it's very light and not very strong. So he only, I gotta look back at this and make sure I got this right. So the first time he only had to Puff and puff once, right? And he could blow the house of straw away. But sticks are a little stronger. So he had to huff and puff two times. But he was still able to blow the house away. The third little pig met a man with a load of bricks and said, Please, man, give me those bricks to build me a house. So the man did. And the little pig built his house with them. Here he is, brick by brick. That's a lot more heavy work. He's using a trowel, right? And he's got to put mortar, that's the sticky stuff, in between the bricks to build the, the walls. Soon the same wolf came along and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in said the wolf. Oh, wow. Now this picture, the point of view is from inside the house. And look at little pig. He's made his house so lovely. And he's got a nice table and flowers. And But there's that scary wolf peeking in the window, threatening him. And he sure looks a little afraid. Well, he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed but he could not blow the house in. So he huffed and puffed three times, but he couldn't blow the house in. At last, the wolf stopped huffing and puffing and said, Little pig, I know where there is a nice field of turnips. Where? said the little pig. On Mr. Smith's farm, said the wolf. I will come for you tomorrow morning. We will go together and get some turnips for dinner. Very well, said the little pig. What time will you come? Oh, at six o'clock, said the wolf. Oh, so they're going to go get some turnips together. What do you think? Is that a good idea? <laughs> well, the little pig got up at five. Oh, so what time were they supposed to meet at six? But he got up at five. He went to Mr. Smith's farm and got the turnips before the wolf came to his house. Little pig, are you ready? Asked the wolf. The little pig said, ready? I've been, been and come back again. And I got a nice pot full of turnips for my dinner. Oh. So he went on his own, came back to make dinner. The wolf was very angry, but then he thought of another way to get the little pig. So he said, Hmm, little pig, I know where there is a nice apple tree. Where? said the pig. Down at Merry Garden, replied the wolf. I will come for you at five o'clock tomorrow morning and we will get some apples. Do you think they're just getting apples? Five o'clock, off for some apples. Well, the little pig got up the next morning at four o'clock and went off for the apples. He wanted to get back home before the wolf came, but it was a long way to Merry Garden. And then he had to climb the tree. Just as he was climbing back down with his basket full of apples, 
He saw the wolf coming. Little pig, the wolf said. You got here before me. Are the apples nice? Oh my goodness. How do you think little pig is feeling up in the tree? Oh, he looks worried. Mm. And wolf looks pretty happy that he's caught poor piggy in the tree. Well, the little pig went, oops, sorry. Yes, very, said the little pig. I will throw one down to you. And he threw the apple as far as he could throw. While the wolf ran to pick it up, the little pig jumped down and ran home. The next day, the wolf came again and said to the little pig, Little pig, there is a fair at Shanklin this afternoon. Would you like to go? Oh, yes, said the little pig. When will you come to get me? At three, said the wolf. So I've got to stop and think for a minute. First, the wolf talked about going to get turnips. Okay, and then next, so two times, second time, the wolf talked about going to get some apples. So how many times do you think the wolf is going to try to get the little pig out of his house? Right? In a lot of traditional tales, things happen in, did you get threes, right? So sure enough, third time, the big bad wolf is trying to get the pig to go out with him to the fair. Well, the little pig went off at two o'clock and bought a butter churn at the fair. A churn, a butter churn, is a wooden thing that you make butter in. In the old days, they would put milk inside it, and then they would swoosh it around inside, and it turns into butter. So he went to buy himself a butter churn. He was going home with it when he saw the wolf coming. The little pig jumped in the butter churn to hide. The churn fell over and rolled down the hill with the little pig in it. This frightened the wolf so much that he turned around and ran home. There's the little piggy rolling in the butter churn. Later, the wolf went to the little pig's house and told him what had happened. A great round thing came rolling down the hill right at me, the wolf said. Hey, hey, I frightened you then, said the little pig. I went to the fair and bought a butter churn. When I saw you, I got into it and rolled down the hill. The wolf was very angry indeed. I'm going to climb down your chimney and eat you up, he said. When the little pig heard the wolf on the roof, the wolf on the roof, oh, that kind of rhymes, or some people say roof. When the little pig heard the wolf on the roof, instead of ellipses, there's a dash. Ooh, what's going to happen? He hung a pot full of water in the fireplace. Then he built a blazing fire. Just as the wolf was coming down the chimney, the little pig took the cover off the pot and in fell the wolf. The little pig quickly put on the cover again, boiled up the wolf, and ate him for supper. Wow, that's a kind of a scary bad ending. But, you know, the wolf did eat his brothers. Oh, there's the wolf's tail sticking out of the pot. And the little pig lived happily ever after. Oh. And there he is planting some of his own turnips and green vegetables in his garden, just like some of you have been planting for spring. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that traditional version of The Three Little Pigs by Paul Galdon. And it's interesting, in this version, I'm a little sorry to say, the two little pigs do get eaten. You know, there are other versions where they don't get eaten or they run away to the house of their brother so that in the last visit, during the last visit to the third brother, all the three pigs are there. But this is a pretty traditional version. And sometimes the traditional versions are a little kind of more scary than some of the new modern versions. Anyway, but I just wanted to hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I hope you have a nice afternoon. I hope you get outside. It's Pretty cool and windy, but still sunny, no rain. <laughs> Please be sure to keep washing your hands, cover your coughs and sneezes, do some reading and some writing, help your family around the house. Um, and I really miss you guys, I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. Elbow bump.